The Mortal Kombat franchise has always been very controversial since the release of the very first game back in 1992 and the topic of controversy surrounded mainly one issue and that is the fatalities. But unlike previous installments, controversy in MK11 went beyond that feature to include other elements that aren't usually associated with the game. Such elements include politics, moral conduct and even gameplay features. In this video, we will look at these controversies and how they helped the title become the best-selling game in the United States in 2019. But before we delve into that, you should learn about Raid Shadow Legends. It's a turn-based RPG that has been the hot thing when it comes to mobile gaming in the past few months. Just like Mortal Kombat, Raid has many different types of characters that you can collect and personally customize for your battles to protect your realm from the Dark Lord and his minions. In your journey, you'll be able to enjoy a fully voiced story campaign, make alliances with other clans, discover new locations, and raid with your friends against the forces of evil. There's also some extra awesome features such as weekly tournaments and events to determine who truly is the baddest combatant. There's also this cool roadmap that they've recently released, so there's always something new for you to enjoy and no time to get bored whatsoever. And the best part? It is totally free to play. So go to the video description, click on the special link and you'll get 50,000 silver coins and a free epic champion to start your journey. Probably the most serious case of controversy emerged right after the release of MK11 and was covered on the video game website Kotaku.com. It features the story of one of Mortal Kombat 11's cinematic team members whose main job was to review violent animation work and sharing feedback with animators. He claimed that in order to achieve realistic effects, a lot of their work involved watching animals being butchered on YouTube, looking at pictures of murder victims' bodies, executions by hanging, among many other gory assets. According to him, after a month of doing that job, he began having extremely graphic and violent dreams and was eventually diagnosed with PTSD by his therapist. This story was quickly featured in different newspapers, claiming that the NetherRealm Studios is involved in moral misconduct and mistreatment of their employees. Honestly, I thought maybe we crossed a line with that one, so I don't think we're going to top it. The second serious controversy that MK11 was involved in has to do with politics. As many of you already know, the NetherRealm Studios faced a lot of criticism from a group of players who claimed that the game is pushing a leftist political agenda. The first reason stated by this group is depicted in Jax's ending, where he defeats Kronika and gains her ability to control time, allowing him to create an alternate history by going back and changing certain things. Jax uses his chance to go back in time and end slavery, giving the opportunity to the people of his race to live the American dream. The second reason stated by the same group of players has to do with the way females are dressed in the game. Strong criticism was directed at how female fighters are way too covered up compared to previous installments. In regards to this issue, the NetherRealm Studios released a statement saying that the decision was made so that female fighters would look more realistic. Of course, not many players were convinced because female fighters in real life don't actually dress that way and if you look at how they dress in say combat sports, you realize that the claim isn't true. Hence, the NetherRealm Studios was criticized by this group for pushing what they call social justice warrior double standards onto their fans. To make matters even worse, there is a line stated by Shao Kahn who is one of the main villains in the game where he says in one of his interactions, make Outworld great again. Let us make Outworld great again. This is a blatant reference to Donald Trump's presidential campaign slogan, make America great again. And we will make America great again. God bless you and good night. I love you. Now some of you wouldn't be offended by this even if you were a supporter of Donald Trump, but many players got very mad that their favorite game is embroiled in politics and other unnecessary matters. 
In addition to that, like any other game these days unfortunately, MK11 received a lot of complaints regarding microtransactions and the reward system, and I have to say, I myself had a hard time unlocking features that I needed to make videos for this channel. For instance, in order to unlock a brutality or even an outfit that you like for your favorite character, you have to spend lots of coins and hearts which aren't easy to get, and that is aside from the countless hours you have to waste grinding in the crypt mode, hoping that you'd get what you want. Regarding this issue, many argued that these modes are purposely designed to push players towards real money purchases from the store, an accusation that I believe is somewhat true because this is the business model that many games are following these days. But I also believe that all the controversies that MK11 caused regarding the political issues and everything that I mentioned in this video helped sell even more copies because as you know, controversy usually brings about even more popularity. Leave before I steal your coins. So what do you guys think of all these issues that ensued after the release of MK11? Let me know down in the comment section below. For more, make sure to like the video and subscribe to Game Lucian.